Hi, welcome back to Game Geeks. I'm your host, Kurt Weigel. Today's episode, Lone Wolf the Role Playing Game. Now, first of all, for those of you manga fans out there, this isn't Lone Wolf and Cub. So, sorry to disappoint you there. Lone Wolf was a series of game books published in the 80s and 90s by Joe Deaver and Gary Chalk. These were sort of a pick a path meets role playing game about a warrior monk in a fantasy land who's the last of his kind who gets to run around and do all sorts of exciting things. They were honestly a huge part of my childhood and what brought me into and kept me in gaming for a very long time. I love the books. I've gone back and reread them recently and you can tell they're written for a younger audience, but that's cool because hopefully it brings in kids now. This is a role-playing game published by Mongoose Publishing under the Open Game License. Now, Mongoose is sort of known for scooping up a lot of established properties and making D20 games out of them. Some people like them, some people don't. I'm of the, overall, they're pretty good. Mongoose has done Conan, they've done Lone Wolf, they've done Starship Troopers. They've done a wide variety of different properties that otherwise wouldn't have been brought to light. Lone Wolf probably would have um, just languished in obscurity had they not bought up this property. This is a D20 game, but it's really a D20 simplified game. You still have your standard six attributes. You still have levels, you still have classes. Races are removed. Most of them are human. The occasional non-human is really blended into the class. The classes are obviously different. What they've also done is they've removed feats. Now, before you D20 fans freak out and close the window and say you're never going to watch this again, hear me out for a second because it really is interesting how they did this. They have spot welded most of the more interesting feats that are appropriate to a class to that class. For example, the Summa Lending Knight of the Realm. They're the only ones who get to use the, the equivalent of the bastard sword without a, without a negative penalty. No other class can really pick it up and pick up the ability to use it like they can. A lot of the more combative feats, power attack, cleave, are their domain. The other thing that comes with this is each class has its own tiers of powers that they gain. Now, this is most obvious in the Kai Lord, which is the warrior monk from the first books, where each Kai skill or Kai discipline that they pick up has different levels that they get with each level. So for example, at first level, if you pick up, oh, weapon mastery, you get the tier one effect. At second level, you get a second discipline. Your second discipline, you get at tier one. Your first discipline that you picked, you get at tier two. And this escalates all the way up to tier five. Then you get above 10th level, you get the manga Kai abilities. Each one of these, basically you go one through 10, and then you start getting the real gravy abilities that are interesting. Magic is also, it's not as free form as a lot of other fantasy games are. It's very limited. The magic spells are pretty much you get with the, magician, with the um, Brotherhood of the Crystal Star, you get three abilities. Each one is a check. I like the idea of a magic check to see how well you do. It's a skill. The skills are there. Combat is pretty much straightforward D20 combat. It's slightly simplified. Certain things are removed to make it more lone wolf. For example, instead of hit points, they're endurance points. Instead of uh, base attack bonus, you get combat skill. The bestiary in it is good. The actual Atlas of the World is a little lacking. I wish they could have done more there. They're starting to expand that out. There are supplements for this for the Darklands, for the magic of, of the uh, Kai Lords. And for, there's an adventure out there to get you started. If you're looking for your fantasy a little different, if you're a fan of the books like I was, this is well worth getting. If you like bog standard D&D and you're just looking for a more traditional game world, this is probably not for you. There you should look to Greyhawk, Eberron, Forgotten Realms, something like that. Dawn Forge, along those lines. If you have any questions, comments, or games you'd like to see us review, a game of yours that you'd like us to review, please feel free to contact us at knweagle at yahoo.com. For Game Geeks, I'm your host, Kurt Weagle. Good night and good gaming.